Hey, Jin Dobre, and thank you very much for joining me. Today we're gonna go through Lydia. What's her name? Sobieska? Shalashaska? What's her full name again? Sobieska. There we go. Lydia Sobieska, uh, Prime Minister of Poland. Today we're gonna go through a little mini, or maybe not so mini, Lydia guide. And if you can, please like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. Let's dive into it. So, Lydia is an aggressive, mix-up heavy rushdown character. She has tremendously damaging combos and some potentially round-ending wall okizeme. She's quite linear and committal though, and generally needs to take risks to get her momentum going. Lydia may struggle against strong defensive players for this reason. Whilst I was labbing her, a lot of people were like, Is she Leroy? Is she Leroy version 2.0? Is it another fucking run? No. She has very clear-cut weaknesses, as well as very defined strengths. Uh, for that reason, I think she's a well-designed character. I think characters are defined not just by strengths, but also weaknesses. Let's quickly go over her pro, what she's good at. Lydia is really good at pressuring you from the mid-range with tools like forward forward 2 and forward forward 4 and running 1, which is plus. On hits, these can convert into some pretty dangerous frame traps. There you go. But do beware as these options are quite linear. Once the opponent is conditioned to sit still, she has some pretty scary mix-ups, some good lows as you can see, and some scary stance mix-ups. This is all guaranteed on block, it's a guard break. Solid block punishment. Has everything you could um, possibly hope for in terms of block punishers. Decent whiff punishment too. Very explosive character. Yeah, very high combo damage. Let me just show you a quick example. Um, Right, 90, that, is, that isn't even optimal. You know, she, she, she hurts, yeah. With the right launches, she really hurts. And her, her Oki at the wall is quite scary too. And she has pretty good panic moves. Right, they're damaging. And a really, really funny taunt cancel, which is absolutely useless. There you go. <laughs> You just press 1 plus 2 and then dash in. Well, it can be used to intimidate intimidate the opponent if you want. You can also do it from back dash. Cons. The biggest um, weakness for Lydia is linearity. Oh my gosh. Sidestep left really blows her up. See? She can be quite risky. Uh, she's quite committal. A lot of her mix-ups... Mix-up characters tend to be committal, um, poor tracking. Um, her pokes are okay, but in a game, like, look, this is minus five on block. She has to, like, go into a high extension to give it decent frames on block. Her poking is quite mediocre in a game that is full of characters with incredible down forward ones. Her jab is, and her down forward one are fairly whatever, but... When you consider how annoying the character is to whiff punish, even if you duck this, it's very hard to punish. Even if you duck this, it's very hard to punish. Very hard to punish. Right? Just about. Right? That's while standing four. So her poking game is deceptively good. Deceptively good. Um, and also, she struggles with keep out. She struggles to play keep out. This is her best keep out move. She doesn't have like a down forward two or a magic four or something to really threaten characters who are trying to get in on her, which means that you need to play her aggressively. And because you need to play her aggressively, that further highlights her primary weaknesses, which is commitment, riskiness, linearity. So. To sum that all up, she's a very explosive, damaging character. The type that can steal around from one combo on a good read and with momentum on her side. But she has to take risks generally and she has to kind of stick her neck out there if she wants to win. You can play more um, compact with her, but it's not what she's good at. I think in terms of difficulty, she's good for beginners in that she has a very rounded set of punishment and that'll teach you the game. And her game plan is fairly simple, but there's a surprising amount of uh, execution for this character. 
For example, her best wall combo is actually quite difficult. Yeah, that is quite hard to land. I didn't even do the Just Frame version. She has a lot of Just Frames, which is, um, yeah, she's designed to have an element of execution behind it. And also, I feel that you need to be quite good at confirming whether, very quickly, whether this is hit or block. You don't have much time. It's quite hard. You have to, you're, you have to be quite focused to play this character. She's quite a mentally taxing character to play, I feel. Every character in Tekken, you need to like confirm whether it hit or block, but with her, you have to be very sharp, I feel. Let's move on to her uh, approach pressure game from mid-range. From around here, you can pressure with Lydia, and uh, the best tool here is forward, forward, two. Only minus two on block, yeah? So you can kind of dart out. It's quite a bit of pushback too. Keep pressuring. Yeah, or sidestep. Yeah, you have a lot of options afterwards. Be warned, this is not Party Crasher. Party Crasher is very hard to step. This is very easy to step, uh, as I said, to the left. See? But, as you can see, it has fairly good uh, whiff recovery. So you generally need to punish with like a jab string or something. If I try to go for something slower, she'll generally recover in time. See? On hit, she goes into a mix-up, like a can sort of mix-up. This is called cat foot one. You can also get it by just doing manually forward three plus four. Cat foot. I like to call this cat food one because it leads into the meow mix. That was a great joke. She has quite a few options once this connects. You're left at fucking plus 15. And basically you have a fast high, a slow high, a fast mid, a slow mid. Let's go through them all. Fast high, cat foot one, resets to neutral with you having an advantage at plus four. You can begin pressure with another forward forward two. Fast mid, cat foot two. This is really strong because if you're mashing, this will counter hit. The safe mid, that counter hits and it's designed to stop mashes. Big combo after this. Slow high is cat food three. Now this leaves you an only minus one on block. Good to continue your pressure. Like you can sidestep, and down four, lots of, lots of options, it's only minus one. And then finally the slow mid option is uh, cat food four, which is a heavily plus on block. Oh, I've mysteriously changed clothes again. Whatever happened? Beware that cat foot four can be stepped to the left, which is Lydia's weak side. However, cat foot three will catch sidestep left for a nice big juicy screw combo. Now, once you've conditioned the opponent to sit still after this connects, and really the best tool to do that with is probably cat food two. Fast mid, if they're trying to mash, they die. Once you've conditioned them to sit still, you can then go into Heaven and Earth, which is accessed by pressing forward after Cat Food 1. And from here, you have some really potent mix-ups. Heaven and Earth 1 plus 2 is a guard break that gives you plus 14, which means a 14 frame Punisher is guaranteed, all guaranteed. And by the wall, yeah, wall splat. A 12, you use her 12 frame punisher, which is four, two, four. Now bear in mind, that is duckable. It is a high. But something you'll notice with Lydia is that despite the fact that a lot of her strings have holes, they're like low highs, mid highs, high highs. Those highs tend to be quite hard to punish because they recover so quickly on whip. So take a look at this. Right? I want to launch punish that. Quite hard, surprisingly hard. You have to be quite precise to punish it. But if you do try to duck it, she also has Heaven and Earth 1, which is straight up a safe mid launcher. Only uh, minus six. She also has a low from Heaven and Earth. Heaven and Earth 2. This is a bit safer than this because you can't launch it. 
Yeah, minus 13 on some matchups. Maybe you don't want to use this against like Kazuya or Josie or Akuma. Gives you a nice plus four on hit. On counter hit, it actually gives you a little launch. Now, if you think she's going to go into heaven and earth, you can play and you can do an abare, which is, means you can mash and like just use a counter hit move or something, a safe counter hit move, and you'll beat all of her options, right? It's a commitment on her end. Right? Counter. An interesting little piece of tech is if you think she's going to go into heaven and earth, you can also jump out of all the options. This is really funny, actually. This sounds like ridiculous, right? Like, oh my god, this character is so bad. Yeah? Um, that you can't actually jump out on reaction. Yeah? If you try to react to her arms going up for heaven and earth, you get clipped, right? You can get clipped by heaven and earth 1 plus 2. It's actually quite a good option to jump out. Because you, the only move that can clip you is Heaven and Earth 1 plus 2. And also, if you try to, if you try to jump out instead of mashing out, this can't count to hit you either. You know, it's, it's a strong defensive option. It's not infallible, yeah? Like, Lydia can also um, delay options from Heaven and Earth to catch jumpers. Right? So, to sum that all up, if you have a big read on a really predictable Lydia who always goes into heaven and earth, the best thing to do, push buttons for the counter hit, right? If you have a down forward two, that also works. And you get a full launch. A less rewarding, but also considerably less risky way to disengage this mix up is to try and jump out as the mid counter to hit option from cat foot one won't counter hit you. And that has to be done on a re. If you try to do it on reaction to her arms going up, this clips you. But if they delay this, it leaves them even more open for, um, for being counter hit. So jumping is a strong option, but it's not infallible. For example, she can also do this from cat foot one to stop reaction jumping. And that, that's gonna kill you, right? You have a lot of defensive options on the table. Characters with parries like Jin as well. See, you can try it. There you go. Look around with your characters. What are the best ways to disengage the pressure after forward forward two on hit? There are a lot of ways to do it. There are pros and cons to blocking, pros and cons um, to jumping, pros and cons to mashing. Mashing is very risky because of the threat of this, yeah? But it le yields the highest potential reward. You get a full launch. Blocking is the safest because you don't really open yourself up that much to anything, but you do have to take the mix, right? Between high and mid. And if you guess correctly, you can, you can, you can launch the, you can launch this. You just have to be on point. And jumping is another interesting option. If you feel confident that she's going to go into heaven and earth, it's sort of a middle ground between blocking and mashing. It's a lot less risky than mashing, but also much less rewarding, potentially. Because all you get, all you get really, that, yeah, they can hold forward to break the stone. So it's, it's less rewarding, but it's another good defensive option. Let's move on to... Forward, forward, four. So that's another good mid-range pressure option. As mentioned, forward, forward, two is, is good to pressure from mid-range. Forward, forward, four is also good at that. Only minus three, better range. Yeah. You can sidestep after this. You can also backdash and go back into neutral. On hit, it um, doesn't go into any stances or anything. Does set you up for her powerful lows because it's plus seven on hit. So if you want to go for standing mix, this is your thing. Forward four also has the forward forward four three fake out. So she can fake this out into a high that is both very plus on block but with some pushback. 
And as you saw, big boy combo. Ah, you gotta sidestep left after this. Ouchie, right? But this is like a super slow high. Only if you're feeling confident. And finally, there's running one. Again, massive range. Pushback, plus seven. So you can do something like running one, forward forward two. Backdash, reset. Sidestep. Yeah. General kind of game. Hey, it's Jarring Alternate Ari again. Just wanted to mention that if running one connects on hit, you get a free forward forward one plus two for a nice lick of damage. Now, the problem with all of these moves, literally every single one of them is sidestep left, sidewalk left. See? See, super linear. This is the option. Yeah, it can be stepped, but it's quite a bit harder than the other option. If you do step it though, you get behind her back. That's all guaranteed on the on the back. So be careful, right? What you need to do with Lydia is in the mid range. It's very important to do stuff like dash blocking, dash blocking, dash blocking, dash 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 block, right? To make your movement more unpredictable. Because if you if you're being very predictable about when you want to go in with stuff like forward forward two, and running one. And forward, forward, four from the mid-range. Yeah, you're going to get blown up. <laughs> so, dash block, dash block. Mix up your timing. Be unpredictable. Dash blocking and multiple dashes with Lydia to fake the opponent out and to realign are super, super important. Yeah, that's fundamental Tekken. Dash blocking is really strong in Tekken, and you need to master it with this character. You need to master the art of mixing up your timing to make moves that don't track track. So that's her mid-range approach pressure game. Let's go into more detail on her mix-up game. Now a good way to initiate a mix-up from standing, as mentioned, is forward forward four on hit. Leaves you pretty close at plus seven. And at plus seven, down forward two is like a pure mix, right? They can't step it. They can parry it and stuff, but it's a strong mid option. And this is linear two, but after forward forward four on hit, they can't, they can't step it. Forward forward two goes into cat food one and down forward two goes into cat food two. Yeah, and you can access these manually with forward three plus four and back three plus four respectively. Cat food two um, gives you an immediate mix up. Cat food one, there is no mix from it. it. They're all highs and mids. But cat food two, there's a straight up mix up right from the back. You have a health sweep. It's actually generally better just to do the first one and then go for Oki. Right? It's very dangerous Oki. If they stay on the floor, they get hit. If they try to do anything, they get launched. It's very scary. There's a mid option, which is Cat Food 2 1. This is safe on block. Like you mix this, like what's this connect? Simple mix between that and that. Um, and the other, the other two tools are uh, generally more like combo material. Like this is a screw that's used in combos and uh, this is used mainly in combos. From Cat Food 2, you can again press forward to go into Pouncing Tiger Stalking Wolf. People have dubbed this T-A-W stance, which I think is super, super lame. You should be calling it P-T-S-D. Pouncing Tiger Stalking Wolf and wolves are a type of dog, so let's stick with that, please. So PTSD stance makes the risk reward on your on your low mid a lot better. Same idea as with going between cat food one to heaven and earth. You leave yourself open for a bit, but in that you get access to mix-ups. From cat food two to PTSD, you should have mix-ups, but then your mix-ups in PTSD are just better. They're better mix-ups. You have this mid plus six on block does absurd damage on hit. 45 damage 
Wall splats! Plus six on block! Crazy! Crazy taxi! <laughs> and the low is that. It looks a bit like uh, Leroy's sidestep four or um, Feng's four from Shifting Clouds. PTSD 2 is mainly a combo tool. I haven't explored PTSD 3 1 very much. It's basically a fast name. Yeah, because this is a little slow and this is fast. Plus on block mid, PTSD 3 1. Safe, mid, mid, natural strain. These are very OP moves, but they're locked between two stances. Ah, yeah, this is the fastest mid, probably, but it has the least reward. I generally only see this used in combos. Also safe. So yeah, you have fastest mid, slightly slower mid, really damaging plus on block mid. And your low is very strong too. Knocks down on normal hit. I wouldn't recommend going for forward forward three, which is your go-to Oki tool here. Generally, if they stay on the floor, good time to go into manual a heaven and earth. tricky, isn't it? There we go. Guaranteed. Now, the cool thing about this is that launch on counter hit. Big damage, too. Woo! 90 damage from a low. Yeah? And it's also only uh, minus 12 on block, I believe. So it's not all that risky. But it is risky that you have to set it up, of course. Just to reiterate, yeah? Forward forward two goes into cat food one and heaven and earth. Down forward two goes into cat food two and PTSD. Both PTSD and heaven and earth are strong, but they need conditioning to go into. Because as with heaven and earth, if you're mashing after down forward two on hit to go into PTSD, Oh, I didn't actually realize that had um, high crush frames. But yeah, if you have a mid, there you go. By the way, something I didn't mention about down forward one is that it is probably Lydia's best mid counter hit tool. You can kind of fish for counter hits with this too. Because on counter hit, you get an easy cat food two one. By the way, ha ha calling your stance name one and two in a game where the terminology is one, two, three, four is very confusing. The second cat food from down forward two, the mid option is guaranteed. See? Yes, and one more thing I should mention is that if you're in rage, uh, PTSD, the low from PTSD is now a rage drive, which is uh, PTSD four two. Ah, there you go. 4, 4, 1 plus 2 is guaranteed. It's a bit tight, though. Or you can just do the easy damage. Do it. Do it. Do that. Five points less damage, but much easier. Ah, one thing I should mention is that from Cat Food 1 and from Cat Food 2, if she presses back, she goes into this sick little dance thing, right? And if you press 1, she does this massive um, unblockable high. <laughs> catch people who chase her down. It's pretty cool, a bit gimmicky, but yeah. Now, let's also cover her, her lows from standing. So we already already said that this is a good way to start standing mix-ups, but you can also just kind of, you know, you can work yourself yourself in and start mixing up from like a jab. Uh, down back four is good. It's a bit slow. Yeah, 22 frames, but plus one. Plus one on hit. On counter hit, knocks them down for some really scary Oki. If they try to get up, Oh, they get launched. And this this is only, I believe, yeah, minus 13 on block. So some matchups you don't really want to use them, like Kazuya, Josie, Akuma, Eddie. The biggest risk with this is getting counter hit because of its sluggishness. The scary low is this. Now you need a clean hit for this to go into the, the dunk, yeah? It needs to be pretty close. It's not like Leroy's one, which clean hits from like a mile away. It needs to be relatively in their face, like around here. Then it'll connect. You're quite negative, actually. You're at a disadvantage situation after this connects, but they're on the floor. So uh, it sets up an interesting little game. If they uh, try to 
wake up mid kick. Yeah, minus seven, right? If they try to get up mid kick, he has really good um, 12 frame punish that knocks down, wall splash as well. If they try to get up low kick, same deal. It does have oak, you just gotta set it up. Once you've conditioned them not to do stuff on the floor, then you can start maybe setting up some uh, looping Okizeme. For example, being scummy, just run up through it again. <laughs> Take some conditioning though and very risk because this move is death on block. The interesting thing about this move is that generally you want to get your guaranteed damage, but if you just if you get clean hit and decide not to do the can follow up, you get plus three. But generally you always want to you want to get the guaranteed damage. Why wouldn't you? She also has a pretty damn good low from uh, Crouch. Uh, fully crouched down forward three. This is really annoying, especially at the wall, which we'll get into later. Good after maybe some conditioning after a down four. By the way, her generic down four has absurdly long range for some reason. Be careful though. Again, stagger, stagger on block. Very risky, very risky. Mixed up with mids like uh, while standing four two. Non jailing mid high though, but is safe. Now she also has while standing one, two, again, non-jailing mid-high. Uh, you can also, if you're feeling really frisky from, from crouch, you can do while standing two, which bizarrely is only minus 12 on block. Not very punishable at all for a launching mid from crouch. It's actually a pretty damn good option. In comparison, Lords while standing two is minus 17. Very punishable. Minus 18, there you go. And very good range. Like from here, you can threaten with fully crouched down forward three. You can also threaten with while standing too. Uh, fully crouch mix is pretty damn strong because the mids are strong. Safe non-jailing mid highs for days, which you know your opponent won't duck under all of these, especially in the first few weeks. Uh, she has a wall bounce while standing three two. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is she has um, really good mids from from uh, fully crouch and a pretty scary, albeit risky low. And also one more mid I want to talk about is this. Yeah? Now, this is a mid-high mid, right? And yeah, non-jailing mid-high, you can duck the um, you can duck the high, but this is crazy hard to punish. Like, you can kind of just, I haven't seen anyone punish this so far. So like, look, I'm trying to punish with a while standing four there. Get, no, you can't. And the last hit's a safe mid. You can't sidestep it. You can't interrupt it. You can down jab it, yeah. Even that's hard though. Good luck punishing this with any consistency. This is very, very obnoxious. And it's only uh, minus five on block. Probably the best thing you can try to do is parry it. That's probably the, the, the only way to reliably punish this string, I think. And the easiest way by far. Better hope your character has a parry, or this string is gonna be a fucking nightmare. What I'm trying to say is, when you're talking about mix-ups, mids, like the first two hits are natural, while the second hit is a high, it's very hard to punish due to the last hit. It's a very obnoxious string, and it's her go-to combo ender and go-to wall combo. It's it's uh, back three, four, four circle forward, one plus two. All right, that covers mix-ups. Let's talk about pokes. I don't think Lydia's pokes are all that special, but they get the job done. You, you poke around enough to make the opponent sit still so you can go for like mix-ups and stuff. She has a jab. It's not the best jab in the world. Slightly short range, not the best hitbox. She has 1-1, one, one, which is a high mid. This is natural, but unsafe. Minus 11. If the second hit connects by itself, you get a combo, which is nice. Don't use it too much. One, two, three. This is uninterruptible with buttons, but it's high, it's safe. If someone's constantly trying to counter jab you, there you go. Uh, again, Probably not worth using that much. One, two, four, four. Now, interestingly, this is a, a low high, a low high, but quite risky, right? Interestingly, if the last hit connects by itself, causes a knockdown, and I believe a forward, forward three, 
is guaranteed after. Yes. But if she does the full string, that is not actually guaranteed. It's weird, right? So it only knocks down on counter hit if you do it by itself. If you don't finish the string. It's a really bizarre string. Oh, and this, by the way, by itself is uh, plus three. So maybe good to start pressure with once in a while. And two, four. Not great on block. Minus eight. So completely lose your turn. But it's a high mid. A standing two has pretty good range, actually. Better than her one. See? And it's a natural. Yeah, pretty solid. But you do kind of lose your turn afterwards completely. Like, minus eight. Ouch. She also has one, two, two, but only use this for a Punisher because it's uh, unsafe. Opponents might have trouble punishing this online. It's only minus 10. Huh? He might want to like do this, then duck, and then yep, online strats. Jab strings are fairly unspectacular, I would say. Nothing, nothing great. Um, let's talk about her down forward one string. Her down forward one is also fairly mediocre. Doesn't have the best range. Minus five on block. It has um, two follow-ups, and if anybody plays Brian, you'll be familiar with these. So if you're just a high follow-up, it goes from minus five to minus three. Gives you a bit more uh, leeway to maybe squeeze in a sidestep. Non-jailing mid-high. But as is a recurring theme with this character, yes, non-jailing mid-high, but obnoxious to punish, do you see? Good luck. Oh, I squeezed in a while standing for two. She has a lot of non-jailing mid-highs, like this. Mid-high, high-high, which all have obnoxiously small whiff recovery. That means even if you duck it, she's actually really fucking hard to punish. It's super irritating. A down forward one, two uh, sh should be very risky, but in, in actuality, it's not. It also looks like an elbow, but it's not. It's not an elbow. You can use you can s use this a lot more regularly than a standard mid-high non-jailing string from other characters, cause it's so hard to punish. And of course, it's a natural and plus eight on hit. So it might be a good time to go for down forward two. Again, as we discussed, good counter hit fishing tool. If you feel really confident that they might try to duck this. Uh, she has Brian's, Brian's uh, down forward 2-3. Here it's down forward 1-3. This is minus 13, so you can actually punish this. That's a bit of pushback, though. See, so jabs won't reach. That's actually kind of hard to punish, right? Because of the pushback. I think Lydia only gets 4-2-4. Four, four. But her pokes seem mediocre on paper, and the range isn't, the range isn't anything special or anything. It's not like Shaheen's down forward 1. But I think their best quality is that they seem like they should be super punishable, but they're not. Um, probably the most annoying thing about this character. By the way, this if this hit by itself, this um, is a MCC, so combos on counter hit. For a good lick of damage and wall splash. And if it hits by itself, hasta la vista, because it's damage time. She gets a lot of damage on counter hits and whatnot. Um, okay. So we talked about her jab, so down forward one. Now the problem with both of these strings is... Side step left. Bit of tracking the second jab, but you know. If you want to try and punish her jab string, you need to commit to a side walk left. There you go. There you go, big punish there. And down forward one, same issue. Tight step left, generally her weak side. So that's an issue, right? Her jabs and her down forward one can both be beaten by side step left. These are your core pokes. Uh, so what do you do to beat that? Well, she does have a homing move. We'll get into that later. But she also has back to one, which catches side step left. I think this will be used quite a lot in uh, yeah, high level Ju Julia, high level Lydia play. And this move, safe. Minus six. Jails, too, I believe. Yep, jails. High, high, but jail. Back to one. Natural, high, high. 13 frames, jail. Pretty damn good. Plus five on hit. Catches her weak side, which is sidestep left. A useful poke, and I think it'll be very useful at um, higher levels of Lydia play. 
where um, stepping is more prominent. And she also has a pretty damn good um, mid extension to it. Back to one is high high, and it's a natural combo. Back to three is high mid. It's safe on block, and it combos on counter hit. And the cool thing is, is if that if the knee connects by itself, you guessed it, combo time weird that this jails. Weird jailing strings. It's like Kunimitsu's 4-2. Why does that jail? It's weird, huh? But it does. It does. And I think it's really important. I think at high level play, you're going to be seeing a lot of it. Because it, it's, it's it's a good string with a, with a good alternate version, which is also safe. Okay, another good poke is uh, her generic down 4, which has bizarrely enormous range. Look at that phantom range. Look at that. Ooh. These long Polish legs. I like can hit from here. Yeah. Let's chip away. As with all generic down fours, well frames, very safe, very fast. Safe due to its range. Very fast. Uh, good at chipping away. You can kind of chip away like this. Sidestep after because you're minus two. Continue your pressure. And once you've conditioned them to respect the sidestep, maybe go into a full crouch mix. Why not? It's actually a key poke for her downfall. Just her generic downfall. Low of the people, right? Really good downfall. Kind of reminds me of like Armor King's one. It's really good. Now, um, I didn't talk about down back two in the mix up section because I feel like this is more of a poking tool. You do something like uh, jab, jab, one, two, down forward, one, two, and then this because it has evasive qualities. This is basically Dragonov's down two. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, minus one on hit. Leaves the opponent standing. You're in crouching. Minus 14 on block. So a bit risky against quite a few characters, which can launch punish it. But the other nice thing about this move is tracks to both directions. Especially to sidestep left, which is her weak side, which is great. And also on counter hit, you get a toe hop stun. Plus 12. So basically, you get a fully uh, crouch mix guarantee. Uh, so a pretty good low for the same reason that Dragodov's down two is a good low. It also ev it's also very evasive too. So you can be like, uh, 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 and if they try to jab you, there you go. Be worried. So a good tool. Be careful though against like characters like Jin or Master Raven or anyone really with a 14 frame while standing launcher. Okay, and that covers most of our pokes. Let's talk about down three. This um, this is really annoying. Okay, so this is this is a classic Lydia move, right? Hey, it's a low high. Ah, should be super risky, right? I can duck it and punish it, right? Uh, I see the first one here. I'll duck the second one and, and just, just just punish it. Well, welcome to Lydia Town because, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> and the thing with this move is that it gives you plus four on block. On counter hit, plus nine, right? If it actually connects. But this on block is plus four. Bit of pushback, which makes it really good at the wall, actually. And this is from a 15 frame low. This is really, really fast. So like, you can really like poke away at people at the wall with this. Plus four in their face. This is super annoying. Down three also goes into a homing move, which is back four. Back four is hilarious because um, back four is a string. This whole thing is natural. Enjoy it whilst it lasts because this is killing people online right now. This is actually the same uh, hell sweep as from uh, Cat Food 2. Stop blocking me for a sec. And again, you don't actually want to finish the string. You want to... Right? This is the uh, Polish steel pedal. <laughs> forward, forward, three. The thing with her homing move is that the only option after it is a low, right? But because it's minus three, only minus three, and because of the, uh, the, the follow-ups, Opponents will be hesitant to um, do anything afterwards, so you can actually use this to start pressure even on block to like get up. All right, let's start pressuring, yeah. yeah something like that. I don't know. You can catch them with surprise with a throw. And if they don't respect it, well then. Right. <laughs> 
moves to transition from poking to mix-ups. Basically, what I'm trying to say is moves that give you plus on block or fully crouch on block. First move here is down one, mid, bit slow, plus two, forces crouch. Super linear. I don't even need to show this. You can imagine it, right? This can be stepped very easily to both sides. Plus eight on hit, though. Sidestep two is knock this sidestep two. Elbow. Forces crouch. Uh, knocks down. There you go. I use it once in a while. It's basically knocked the sidestep too. Like she steals moves from a bunch of characters. Like Brian's down forward two string, but a bit better. Knocks to sidestep two. Uh, Dragonov's down two. Down forward four four. This is a fairly decent plus on block move. Don't be fooled by the frame data. This is not 12 frames. You can tell. This is clearly not 12 frames. The reason why it says it's 12 frames is it's cancelling from her down forward 4. I'd imagine it's around 25 frames, something like that. Plus 6 on, on block, sounds pretty good. But then, I do probably have to show you this, has zero tracking. Despite the fact that it looks like it might. There you go. Quite slow to recover on whiff too. But if they if they do get clipped by it, even on normal hit, very damaging. Yeah, like 90 damage. Oof. But yeah, slow, non-tracking high. I'm not sure how I'm not sure how how much utility this has. And yeah, as we mentioned, down three one gives you plus on block, but a lot quite a bit of pushback. Probably uses it at the wall. Also, down forward four two. Again, a non-jailing mid-high. Ah, oh, you can actually punish this, thank god. Thank god, this is a normal non-jailing mid-high. Yeah, you'll be using, um... Speaking of down forward four, this move is probably her best keep out move. This move catches her weak side too. Only minus four on block two. Bit slow though, compared to most, um down forward fours, which tend to be I-12. This is um, I-15, a bit slower, but minus four on board. Just to talk a bit about her key pout. Her key pout is not very good, generally, I think. Yeah? So, um, she doesn't have like a generic down four two, or a magic four, or a big boot to the crotch, or an electric, something to like, scare people, like, intimidate people from just running up to her. Uh, the best thing she has is this. Keeps her in place. Brief recovery is okay but has very long range right nice long polish legs and yeah you can sort of like run away and do this and do this and bear in mind if they get saucy with trying to whiff punish a bit slow but you do have that this string by the way is, is, is as you can see it's plus one on block you can occasionally use it at the wall where the the plus frames are more meaningful because in, in open ground there's quite a bit of pushback it's kind of pointless you have a mid to cover it but it's minus 10. Uh, but yeah, down forward four, her only real keep out move. Not great. She's not really a keep out character. She has a bunch of count hit tools and they're all used in different situations. If you ever, if you feel the opponent really loves to push buttons, like after this on hit, this is plus eight. After this on hit, this is plus seven. Then do quarter circle forward two, two. Back forward. Look at my inputs. Quarter circle forward to two back forward. And then if you see it connect, probably on counter hit, do the last forward one plus two to get this hugely damaging string. 63, not bad, right? But this is a bit of a commitment, right? Because first two hits are minus 14. Last hit's minus 16, a bit of pushback, ouch. So yeah, like probably not very useful at higher levels. One move I forgot as a um, count hit fishing tool, which you probably shouldn't use that much because it's unsafe. It's basically Fakum Rum's three string, but nowhere near as good. It's uh, down four, three, four. And it's the old version of this string as well, before they nerfed it in the recent patch. The second hit knocks down on normal hit, which Fakum's run three, four doesn't anymore, has to be counter hit. You can get 
three hits on it. Like Falcon Rom got forward, forward, two, one. Lydia gets forward, forward, one, plus two. And on counter hit, uh, it all connects. But monster damage, it's basically Falcon Rom's three, four, but without the insane range. I don't recommend using it very much, quite risky. Minus, minus 12, right? I think a better, safer counter hit fishing tool is down forward two, yeah? This, like, you know, if, if your opponent is mashing after this on hit, or this on hit, they can't sidestep this, and on counter hit, this is guaranteed. 41 damage, pretty good. Safe on block. And if they try to duck, if they're at frame advantage and they try to duck, you also go into uh, Cat Food 2. Right? Which Cat Food 2 is an instant mix up stance. Elsewhere. Mid. Safe mid. You can also go to PTSD. There we go. Point like that, right? Or. Mid, right? And the thing with down forward too is because it's relatively safe, because it's safe and has pretty good range, see? You can kind of fish with this. You can kind of fish for counter hits with this from like around here. Uh, be careful though, it dog shit tracking, quite slow to recover on whiff. So if, you, if you're if you throwing it out this kind of range, you are taking a fairly big risk. If they just backdash, they can kill you. I generally like to use it more as um, a count hit fishing tool when you have frame advantage, but you can occasionally just kind of run up and just do it. it has a smidgen of tracking, but like generally one sidestep enough is enough to get, get over this. Certainly a sidewalk is enough. Right? Again, um, si side walk left, side step left is her weak side. Uh, how many plus frames has it become unsteppable? I'm not sure exactly, but it's unsteppable after forward four on hit and down forward one, two on hit, which are your main um, avenues to frame advantage. Yeah, you can't actually step it after down, after, uh, down one. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and she does have one more count hit tool, which is 4-2 uh, and 4-3. And I think these are mainly just used as panic moves. This is a non-jailing high high. Oh god, this fucking character. Yeah, there you go, just about. Yeah, you can get, certainly get a 13 frame, I know. 15 frame is a bit of a, a bit of a wash. If you wanna, if you wanna duck under this lady's highs and punish them with a launcher, good luck, right? Like, you just have to be really on it. But yeah, panic. I think this is generally used as a panic move when when they're pressuring you. You get a combo on counter hit. It's like a magic four, but you can't really use a keep out move because you have to commit to the string to get a combo. To further discourage ducking this, it she also has four three. Yeah, she again. It's a combo on counter hits and is a mid, but it is unsafe on block at minus 10. So Lydia has a lot of panic moves and an important one I forgot to cover is hop kick. As you can see, it's a low crush. On whiff or on block, it's only one hit, but on a successful hit, it goes into this double kick into an auto screw for a little combo. Due to the unorthodox animation, it's a little bit harder to block punish than most regular hop kicks. But if you're sharp, you can still get your I-13 punishing. She has a parry. She has a mid power crush wall balance, it's minus 14. She has a mid power crush wall splat, it's minus 12. This looks homing, but you can you can sidestep left it, le left it. it. She has down for one plus two, which is an interesting uh, move because it's a sabaki that only works against right punches and double punches. And it's only minus two on block. It's very slow though. And she also has down back three plus four, which is an auto low parry into a mid, which is not that negative on block. 
interesting collection of panic moves when you're being pressured. Just to show you, a lot of these have canned follow-ups. So if someone's pressuring you up close and you parry, right? During the, the third strike parry, press 2-1, then 2. Get the canned follow-up. There is a just frame, which gives you a bit more damage. Watch as I don't get it at all. Oh yeah, I'll just mash 1 plus 2. Ha! <laughs> yeah, you can just literally mash 1 plus 2. Like an idiot. So her down back 3 plus 4. This can actually catch dick jabs as well. And has a can follow up, as you can see, with just jabs. Can follow up a 4 4 1 plus 2 for a nice lick of damage. Yeah, it's quite hard though. Catches lows too, of course. I think uh, the best use for it might be to catch dick jabs. A lot of the frame advantage she gets, like after after her main initiating tools, like forward forward four plus seven, down forward one two plus eight. At these points, down forward two is like a mid that you can't sidestep, and you know it gives you a nice little count hit combo. Yeah, and if they duck, expecting a low, you know it goes into cat food too. Right? So I don't really know when you'd use this as a kind of a, as an option select mid and dick jab catcher. It's more for style points, I think, probably this. Uh, I think this, though, is, is, is genuinely a good parry. Window seems a bit tight, honestly, but... But that's really good damage for a parry, and it wall splats. Ah, this is quite interesting, too. That's tremendous damage. See? It, 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 it goes through punches which are with both hands and right punches, not left punches. So it, it makes me question how useful this will be against pressure, because most pressure is like jab, down forward one. It's usually with the left hand, right? So I'm trying to think who it might be useful against. Mishima's? Yeah, kind of. I've seen them wave dashing it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty sick, actually. Yes, that's really cool. That's a very generous window. See the, the, and there's a just frame version too. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't actually work. It sees airborne, right? Can't parry running moves. Well, there you go. Interesting. Cool, huh? Right. We can't be asked to sidestep ref. <laughs> right. One more thing I forgot, one more thing I forgot, which is very, very unusual, right? Is this. This is a punch parry. Very risky, like, but let's get um, someone who likes to punch you a lot. There you go. Right? But, bear in mind that if she just does it willy-nilly, and you don't do anything, it's hyperlinear, right? And the later, the later portion of it is not a punch parry, right? It's just the, it's like the first 10 or 15 frames, I guess. I think once you've been parried, like the unblockable is pretty much guaranteed. But as you can see, massive risk, right? Very linear. And the later, the later frames don't even punch parry. Let's talk about uh, Lydia's wall game. Wall splatting mid, safe wall splatting mid, I should say. Only minus nine. What's the weakness? You guessed it. Yeah. Linear. Light step left. Quite poor whiff recovery too. She has a uh, throw. Yeah, a wall splatting throw, which is up forward one plus two. And then after it connects, two. Four, four, three, one. Pretty damaging. The thing is, is that this uh, move is her only command throw. If you see it at the, uh, her, her going for throws at the wall, go for a one plus two, because this is, this is a lot of damage, right? Yeah, that might actually set up for you to do her generic throws if they're scared of this. Don't use generic two throw, because you're just fucking corner yourself. Use a generic one throw. Unusually leaves them standing. No frame advantage though. As we mentioned before, uh, this is pretty good at the wall because in open ground it has a bit of pushback, this poke. At the wall it doesn't, so you can really pester them. Even on block, it's plus uh, four. 
on counter hit. It's, nat it's a natural combo on counter hit. NCC. Plus nine. Uh, and the, the high is actually quite quite hard to... Um, quite hard to whiff punish. That's a running theme with Lydia. Down forward two. non jelling mid high. Plus one. And occasionally cover this with this. Careful. But if they try to duck under this, and you do this, then they get wall of There you go. What is really dumb about her wall game is that her fully crouch game is really stupid. So if you do fully crouch down for three, another one guaranteed. Sets up for a real 50-50 between another one. So you can just be like, I can press a button. Right? <laughs> that just kills them. You can like do this. Like, right, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun, right? Oh, they're dead. <laughs> this is actually safer than this. A launcher is safer than her elbow, so, um, yeah. Minus 12 is really unusual. At the wall, it's much easier to get a clean hit on this. And if they try to uh, disrespect you with, with get up kicks, Bear in mind that, you know, if you guess right on this, they're getting wall splattered. Because she has really good 12 frame punishment. So even though you're not plus after this, you're like minus seven or some shit. If you guess right on the mid or low get up kick, then they're, 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 in, they're in a bad spot. Let's talk a bit about whiff punishment. I think actually this back three is a really underrated whiff punisher. Because, uh, especially in mid-range, right? Because in mid-range, you're backdashing away, looking for a, um, looking for a whiff, right? Looking for a twitch. And this actually has fairly good range. And it comes from a... I, I always value whiff punishers that start from a back motion. Because it allows you to just input it much more quickly and naturally. So they whiff something, pat pat, natural, plus five in their face, right? You can start your mix-up game. It's unsafe on block. Yeah, minus 11. A great range, right? Oh, is this a... Don't tell me this is a combo. It is. Oh, well, it's real. There you go. There you go. Wow. That's a real plus 14. Other whiff punishments. Uh, this. Uh, I-14 punish. Really long range, you can see. And you can kind of uh, confirm, confirm it as well. First two hits are safe. Bit of a tight confirm from just that. I generally just do forward one plus two three, and if they see that connect, two one. Forward forward two. Good range, right? It's a pressure. It's an uh, approach tool, a pressure tool, but also a good whiff punisher. This kind of range forward two four is good. Very fast twelve frame punisher. Close range. I'd say this is probably her most important whiff punisher. From a sidestep, it's either one one. If you want to stay in their face, plus frames and standing, or you can do one, two, two, which puts you into cat, cat food too. And as we mentioned, uh, you have a bit of a mix. Bear in mind, she is plus eight here. And if she goes into cat food two from down forward to it's plus 12. And plus eight actually makes a lot of this mix kind of um, steppable, I believe. So it's a bit risky. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So her mid check is actually steppable from one two two. So be cautious about that, right? Like from a from a from this, this is not steppable. But from one two two, it is steppable. So be careful. See? I can't side step left this from up down forward two, but I can after one two two. Those are your two main entries into cat food two. Of course, there are options from cat food two to beat side step left. This will also beat side step left. She has a faster mid, which will beat side step left, but but this is unsafe on block. Yeah, I'm just just bear in mind that if you go into cat food two with this, cat food two one, so this is steppable to the left. Be careful about that. With punishers up close from a side step, usually one two two is good, uh, or one one is good. From a side step, if they whiffed something big, three two. Ooh, this is gonna this is gonna hurt, right? This is really gonna hurt. And the annoying thing about this is that like 
Okay, she does, she does something like that, right? Ah! It's... <laughs> It's it's a it's a non jailing hi hi. I'm gonna duck that. I'm gonna punish that. Good luck. Like yeah. <laughs> but still, it's it's an I seventeen high. It's a bit of a risk. Uh, you usually use it as a whiff punisher, and it's gonna do Gonzo damage if it hits. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I didn't actually do the just frame there, but yeah, it's gonna break 90 damage. Block punishment, and she's really, really well-rounded in this respect. She doesn't have anything crazy like a 13 or a 14 frame launcher, but everything else is really quite top class. So 10 frame from standing is one, two, two. As we discussed, goes into cat food two. Two, four, plus eight with a bit of pushback. One, one, plus five with less pushback. Um, I think probably at high level, 1-1 one, one might be the favored one, because I feel like this might be a bit risky at high level, especially since you can sidestep left the, 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 the keep in check mid. And the other mi the mid, keep in check mid is minus 10, which you can't sidestep, but yeah, it's, it's kind of risky, I feel. Whereas this, plus 5 in their face, you know, you can continue poking, uh, you can, you know, go for your clean hit, low, yeah, I think it's a bit more flexible. That's 10 frame, yeah? One more time, one, two, two, cat through two, two, four, plus eight with a lot of pushback, and one, one, plus five, less pushback. 11 frame, back, one, two, plus five, leaves been crouch, pretty damn good. And a 12 frame is really good, four, two, four. As I've shown, it also punishes gets up four kicks because of its range, which is amazing, and that's what you want in a 12 frame punisher. 13 frame, uh, down forward, one, two. Damage isn't spectacular, but plus eight in their face, so it's pretty good. 14 frame. This. I find this string very annoying, but forward one plus two, three, split it up to two. Forward one plus two, three, two, one. Ah, and you can also do a perfect rage drive. It's also uh, 14 frames. At 15 frames, up forward four. Her hop kick. 17 frames, three, two. Now, that has a just frame version, which does a bit more damage. Look at my inputs. I did three, one, two. Uh, this little trick that, that um, Lee players like to use on their back 1-1-2 one, one, string, you press an extra button to help you time the just frame. So I do 3-1-2, yeah, 3-1-2. Makes it easier as opposed to timing it manually, which is quite hard. Uh, crouching, again, good set of punishers. 10 frames, really crouch down forward 1. 11 frames while standing 4-2, which is great. Most characters have a while standing 4, she has an extension. 12 frames. Julia, elbow, wall splat, really good at the wall. 13 frames, either while standing four or while standing one, two. You wanna stay in their face with plus six or do you wanna knock down? Your pick. 14 frames while standing three, two, which is a wall bounce or perfect rage drive. Uh, 15 frames while standing two. And 23 frames up four neutral. Blade hop. Combo. I'm not going to go over all of them exhaustively, but I'll go into the most important kind of roots from a hop kick. Just do it, hold forward, we'll go into PTSD, jab, two jab, and then finish with back three, four, quarter circle, quarter circle four, one plus two, which is your general ender. From any like launcher, standard launcher, from like while standing two or four, four, three, or side step four, which I didn't talk about, but isn't, isn't very, very useful. Bah! You wanna do back one two, plus two, back two three, down four four three. Right. From anything that kind of crumple stun, so three two, or down four four four, or four 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 three. You have to do a quick side step left after that. Um, you wanna do something like this. Down back three, four, and then just like literally hold down forward and mash two. Look at my input. Then down forward, four, three. Okay. Different alternate enders for your combos. So uh, instead of ending with this, end with this to go into some good Okizeme. So for example,
There you go. PTSD Okizeme. Use back two, three, and back one plus two to float them towards the wall. So, um... There you go. Didn't quite reach there, but you get the idea. Oh yeah, back three, one is also good there. Yeah, see? Oh, that. Yeah, that's a great high wall splat. If you want to carry him to the wall, back 3-1. Uh, if you're really far away, back 2-3, medium distance, and back plus 1 plus 2 if you're quite close. Let's just talk a little bit about her wall combos, just to round everything off. Easy one is back 3-4, full circle third, 1 plus 2. You can also do cool circle forward, 2-2, two, two, back four, 1 plus 2. Uh, Resplat options with her. If you get a very flush on straight um, wall splat, Backdash, or 4 3. So, like this. But let's talk about setting up Heaven and Earth Okizeme after a wall bounce. 3 2, 4 4 2. It's actually quite hard. This, I feel, is the hardest execution that Lydia players will need to get down. See? Oh, this is dirty, right? Right? You can see this loop. Even after a, after a wall tech, they're, they're not free from this. See? Nasty, right? Nasty, nasty, nasty. If they try to wall tech after this combo, they just put in this horrible guessing position between do I stay standing and I get resplatted for the round? Do I crouch, get launched, or do I stay on the ground and get hit by that? It's it's pretty scary. Pretty scary. There are ways to get out of this, but it's sort of like a Brian Light taunt setup. By the way, if they try to get up with mid kicks, um, see, you have, you have enough time. Just press nothing, basically. Bait it out block in time. You saw it the first time. There you go. Um, also, if you feel really confident, you can actually use moves like... Um... There you go. You can actually snuff it out. But if they do wall tech against that, you're dead, right? <laughs> I think they can squeeze jabs in. So just, just to show you the potential of this character, I'm going to do a death sequence right now to, to finish this all off. Hundred and seventy-five points of damage, you're dead. <laughs> to the point, you're dead. Yeah. Like that's one combo into one 50-50 um at the wall if they got up incorrectly. <laughs> that's the power of the character. She is explosive, that's for sure. But having said that, how did I get that? I got this on counter hit. It's a uh, 25 frame high with no tracking. How practical is this really? Yeah, I can do it with 3-2 instead. But yeah, that's an example of just how explosive this character can be. And just to round things off, here are a few more wall combos. Here's an easier alternate into the forward forward two into heaven and earth wall Oki. Use down three one. A max max damage, but absolute hardest wall combo is three two into forward forwards one plus two. Really hard though. Okay, and let's bring this to a close with a roundup. Lydia, she's a, she's a character with very prominent strengths and very prominent weaknesses. Uh, she's, her combos are very, very damaging. Her block punishment in particular is very, very solid, but like nothing stand out special, like a 13 or a 14 frame launcher, but really excellent in every other regard. Um, she's very, very explosive in, in, and momentum based, like her mix ups. Once she gets momentum rolling, uh, her mix-ups are very scary, and once she gets a combo, uh, her wall carry is well above average, and at the wall, she has some pretty scary Okizeme, as you could see. Her main weakness is 
linearity. Yeah, you could see how many moves are weak to uh, sidestep left. So many core moves, like uh, many of her mid-range approach tools, like forward, forward two, forward, forward four, uh, running one, jabs, down forward one, down forward one, two. A lot of her core tools are weak to sidestep left and side walk left. So especially in the mid-range, dash blocking and mixing up your timing are very important unless you want to get stepped and punished. Use of moves up close like, sorry, uh, back two, three, which catches sidestep left, down back two, which tracks very well. And her uh, quite annoying homing move, though it is a high. Um, those will be important. And she doesn't, the other weakness is she doesn't really get much reward from key pounds. She doesn't have like a generic down forward two or a magic four or something like that to hold her ground and get a lot of damage from it. So she's really encouraged to play aggressively. You can't like, you know, dick around here, throw out a magic four, get a combo, or get a throw out a back one or a forward four, whatever. You have to go in and, and set your damage up. So in that regard, she's also quite committal. Overall, I think uh, my impression of her is that more characters should be designed like her in the sense that they have prominent strengths and weaknesses. That's something I want to see more in Tekken. What I don't like about her is all these annoying, um, like, shit you can't punish. That, I hate that shit. If they made some balancing changes to her, it just make this easier to punish. Make this easier to punish. Uh, make this easier to punish, right? Once you duck them. It's, it's just annoying, frankly. But other than that, they've clearly taken on board uh, the feedback from Leroy and Fakram Ram. And they've clearly tried to design a character. I feel like a character's identity is just not what makes them good, but what also makes them bad. And there are things definitely make that, that make Lydia bad. So in that sense, I don't think she'll be a top tier. But I think uh, she will be pretty good in tournaments. I think she is pretty scary to go up against. She is the kind of character that can potentially kill you with one good whiff punish to, uh, you know, wall carry, wall off his MA. I missed it up there. And she also has some execution to her. Um, she also has some execution, like surprising, like that 3-2 to 4-4-2 four, four, at the wall is really tricky. See, there is a bit of execution to her. Uh, it's surprising. Most new characters in Tekken aren't like that. Ugh. But yeah, overall, I think she's a really interesting character. Um, I think she's quite fun. Um, certainly a lot more fun than launch Leroy or launch Vakum Ram. They've clearly learned how to create a more balanced character for season four. They've, they've clearly taken criticism on board. But yeah, that's Lydia in a nutshell. That's Lydia in a nutshell. Thanks for tuning in. Um, please like, subscribe, donate, pledge. Pledge your, your, your liver and uh, sacrifice your eyeballs to the demon goat lord. Thank you very much for your time and for your patience.